Good morning, church. The Lord is risen. Amen. Uh, I'm Pastor Marty, pastor of Algonquin and Central United Methodist Churches, and I greet you on this Easter Sunday. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be very glad uh, in it. Special uh, greetings to those of you who are joining us online. A few words of instruction for you. Uh, for those of you who are watching online, if you have a prayer request and you would like to share it uh, and are comfortable typing that into the comments line, please do so and then that information uh, will get sent uh, to me uh, to share. Uh, for those of us uh, who are here, uh, a few words of instruction. Uh, one is that in each pew is uh, an attendance register, and if you haven't done so, please let us know of your attendance. Also, in each pew is a, a card that if you have a prayer request and would like to uh, share that with the congregation, feel free to write that on the prayer request to, uh, and then place that into the offering plate and that will come to me. Now, uh, ushers, uh, I want to just say something. Pastors calling what in football is known as an audible here. <laughs> so uh, I just want to mention that we do have at each exit uh, a wonderful little book called Three Simple Rules. If you don't have a copy, be sure to get a copy. And so I don't know, ushers, if after the service, if you might just uh, have some handy uh, to give uh, to anyone that might be interested. Three simple rules on a Wesley way of living. And we'd like to make sure that uh, anyone who wants one today gets that. One other audible, ushers, if I may ask, our, our altar is so beautiful that I'm wondering if we can keep the candles lit for just like five minutes after service. And if somebody wants to run and get a quick selfie, get a selfie with that beautiful background, but don't, don't take long, because some people are going to want to get their flowers and go home. But it is just so beautiful that I, I just thought I need to give that opportunity. And uh, Tina, I hope to get a shot of us uh, with that. So it is good to be in the house of the Lord on this day. Special thanks uh, to all those uh, who worked uh, to make the breakfast uh, happen. It smelled wonderful when I came in. I'm pouting because yeah, we had couldn't come. But boy, it, it sure smells good and it looks like uh, those that came had a wonderful time. As we begin our worship service, we like to begin by reminding ourselves of who we are and who we feel we are called to be by reciting our mission statement. And you can find the mission statement uh, on the front of your bulletin, and I invite you uh, to read along with me. Connecting all people to God by building bridges of caring, outreach, and acceptance. I invite you to stand for this morning's call to worship. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my power. The Lord has become my salvation. There is joyous songs of victory in the tents of righteousness. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The 
This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And if you'll join in singing our opening hymn, Christ the Lord has risen today on page 302 in the red hymnal. Verses 1 through 4. Verses 1 through 4. Shall we pray? Gracious God, just as you raised Jesus from the dead, you now offer us new and transformed lives in the risen Christ. We rejoice and give thanks for this good news, which has been handed down to us from generation to generation. May we too be witnesses of Jesus, who you anointed with the Holy Spirit, to bring blessings of mercy and healing. May we be witnesses of Jesus' suffering and death and how he meets us in the broken places of our lives. Most of all, may we be witnesses of the resurrection, sharing your promise of forgiveness and grace with all people. This is your doing, O Lord, and it is marvelous in our eyes. We offer this prayer in the risen Christ's name, and all pe God's people said, Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I invite our young people to come forward. Good morning. You 
are welcome to sit down if you're more comfortable, but it's nice to see everyone, and you all look so nice in your outfits, so uh, thank you for coming here today. Can anybody tell me what special day this is? It is Easter, and when we say Easter, what do we think of? We think of a lot of things, right? We do think of Easter bunnies and Easter eggs. But we also should be thinking about Jesus and about the fact that Jesus uh, rose from the grave. And I wanted to share with you just some words from a great song that's called Because He Lives. And it helps us all to understand why today is so important. And I thought of that this person that wrote this song put it very nicely uh, in a short amount of words. God sent his son. They called him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon an empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. And then the chorus is, Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. Easter really is a big deal. And the older you get, I think the bigger deal that should become in your life. Because we know that the grave and death have been conquered by a living and risen Jesus. And that's something that we can take comfort in. So I invite everyone to pray with me. Dear Lord... Thank you for loving me. Thank you for Easter. Help me to remember it always. In Jesus' name. Amen. Good job. Thank you. chapter 10 verses 34 through 43 tells how Peter a disciple of Jesus learns that God loves everyone not just certain people he shares how Jesus taught and healed died on the cross and rose again offering forgiveness and new life to all who believe this passage shows that God welcomes everyone regardless of their background or nationality it teaches us to treat others with love and acceptance, following Jesus' example and reminds us of the universal message of hope and salvation for all people. The first scripture reading is Acts chapter 10, verses 34 through 43. Then Peter began speaking, I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout the providence of Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached. How God announced, anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross. But God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses from whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. 
He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God anointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sin through his name. That ends the reading. Our second scripture reading comes to us from the Gospel of Mark, the 16th chapter, verses 1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, Who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here See the place where they laid him. But go and tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. The word of God for the people of God.
Let us lift our voice in Easter praise with hymn number 304, Easter People, Raise Your Voices. I invite you to stand as you are able. Please be seated. <laughs> Have you ever invested lots of time into a movie only to be disappointed by its ending because you just don't know what really happened? Uh, they call that an ambiguous ending. I try not to use words that I don't know how to spell, but it is appropriate. It's an ambiguous ending. I happen to look up famous movies with ambiguous endings, and I only saw two that I recognized. Uh, one was, I believe Matt Damon was in the movie, Incursion, and it's where you were going back and forth in different realities and, and everything. And in that, the only way he could tell of whether he was in a reality versus a dream was he would spin a top. And when he'd spin the top, if the top just kept spinning forever, then he was in some dreamland or other dimension. But if the top eventually ran out of gas and fell over, then he was in reality. And you watch the whole movie, and he does all of these things in different places and different dimensions and such. And he's like, was this real or not? And he spins the top, and it focuses in on the top spinning, and then it blanks out. And you've no idea if it fell over or if it just kept spinning. It, it is an ambiguous ending. Another movie that I did recognize, and it shows my age, it's called The Graduate. Anybody remember The Graduate? Okay, good. I'm not the only one. Robert Redford, and yeah, one of his early, or not Robert, um, Dustin Hoffman, thank you. Dustin Hoffman, one of his early movies, and it ends where he decides, oh my gosh, I need to crash this party where this girl that I really have these feelings for, it's not just a party, it's her wedding. And he crashes in and it's kind of like, here's your chance, run away with me, don't, don't get married. And she does run off with him and they get in the back of like a Greyhound bus and you see him sit down in the back and they look really happy, but then as the bus goes into gear, the movie ends showing a look of fear and a look of uncertainty 
And so you're left with this, oh my gosh, uh, you know, did they live happily ever after or not? How, how did it come out? It's an ambiguous ending. And I don't know about you, but I just, I kind of like to know the rest of the story. I like to know how things came out. I don't like, I like mysteries, but I also like them solved. And much to my annoyance, to this very day, one of the great mysteries of my life is from first grade. Valentine's Day. A valentine this big, red with white lace, with words that were shocking to a, fir a first grader. I love you. And the card was not signed. And to this day, I have no idea where that, where that came from. One of the mysteries of my life. Ambiguous endings. And oh my goodness, when we read the Gospel of Mark, we just had this reading, and you talk about an ambiguous ending. Let me read that last verse for you again. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Now Mark was the first gospel written. And it's important to remember that the gospels weren't written until about 30, 40, or more years had gone by after the death and resurrection of Jesus. The reason why people didn't write down the stories of Jesus sooner was you had the apostles who were alive and they could share that story and people thought Jesus is coming back anytime soon so there's no need to write this down. But as persecution began and as apostles began to be martyred and other Christians began to be martyred, and ultimately, Jerusalem is overrun and the nation of Israel no longer exists. It's pretty clear the world has changed and we don't know when Jesus is coming. Let's start writing these things down so that we can preserve them for the ages to go. And the earliest and the most reliable manuscripts of the Gospel of Mark and at verse 8. If you happen to open your Bible and look at Mark chapter 16, you'll find that there are more verses listed after verse 8. It goes from 9 to 20. But those verses don't appear until later into the second century. I think that somewhere along the line, there was a monk who probably shared a lot of my same sentiments. I don't like unfinished stories. So he began to write down some other things that are pieces that may kind of sound like they came from other Gospels. For example, we read about Mary Magdalene. We get a little bit more information about Mary Magdalene. That sounds a little bit like the story from the Gospel of John. We get the story also of two people walking along a ro the road. That sounds like Luke's The Road to Emmaus. And then we get Jesus saying, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every living creature. That sounds like Matthew. And then we get these verses about drinking poison and handling snakes and frankly, that doesn't sound like any gospel, but those words are in there. But I think Mark intended to leave things hanging at verse 8, trembling and bewildered. Because I think that that's where a lot of Mark's listeners found themselves even to that day. How would you feel if you were watching your nation crumble before you? <laughs> Maybe we are. <laughs> How would you feel if you saw 
respected elders in the church being arrested and persecuted and ultimately martyred. You might be tempted to be quiet and to be afraid. It's interesting that in the Gospel of Mark, all during Mark's Gospel, Jesus is doing something and he's telling his disciples, be quiet, don't tell anyone anything until after I rise from the dead. And yet, even though he told them to be quiet, they go out and they tell everybody. And now we come to Jesus has risen from the dead, and he says, tell everybody, and now they're silent. Isn't that a little bit like human nature sometimes? They're afraid. They're trembling. They're wondering. And I'm sure that Mark knew the rest of the story. He knew what the acts of the apostles were. But I think what Mark was trying to do was to send a message to each and every one of us through the ages to say that we all have an unfinished story in our lives and it's up to us to write that story and we have the opportunity to write that story so that it is one of faith and one of obedience and one of Christian service and virtue. I don't know if you've had the opportunity, but I've had the opportunity to go and to listen to motivational speakers. I think that I'm their personal challenge uh, when I show up to see if they can get me excited uh, to do something. And they so often will say things like, if you knew that you couldn't fail, what would you do? And it's that challenge to pursue dreams and to give something a try. Maybe be a basketball coach. Maybe open that store. Maybe try singing in front of people. If you knew you couldn't fail, what might you do? Well, I think Mark is packaging that question a little differently. Mark is packaging the question in this way. Now that you know that death and sin and the grave has been overcome by our risen Lord, how will you live your life and how will you respond to that message? Will it be one of faith? Will it be one of service? Will it be one of obedience to our Lord? And no one can answer that question for anyone else but themselves. I once found myself in a conversation where someone had made really poor choices in their life. And as a result of those poor choices, they had a lot of grief in their life. And frankly, they had a lot of life-changing things happen to them because they made poor choices. And in the midst of that conversation, it was like the comment was made, I really don't like how my life story reads. There are chapters that I'm embarrassed about, chapters that I don't like at all, and I wish that they weren't there. But the realization came, but wait a minute. Each day, I'm writing the chapter of my book, and the decisions that I make, and the things that I do, and the things that I say, I control that, and if I want my book to read better, then I can take the steps to show that I am 
making better decisions. I'm living differently. I'm living in a much better fashion. And I think what Mark is challenging us with the news of the risen Christ is to not stay trembling and bewildered, but to rejoice in the good news that sin and the grave and death have been conquered. And that we have a God who loves each and every one of us deeply and intimately. Did you catch that little bit of go tell his disciples and Peter? That's huge. You may remember the story not long ago, Peter just denied Christ three times. He's probably thinking, my opportunity for a life of faithful service is over. God will have nothing else to do with me. No way would Jesus ever want me. And in fact, the message is, tell Peter. And we later learn that Peter meets Jesus, not as judge, but as one who restores him and gives him the opportunity to serve in faithful ways, even to the point of being recognized as one of the leaders of the church. And so, beloved of God, this day, this Easter Sunday, let us look at this message from Mark and then let, it apply, let us apply it to our lives and say, oh my gosh, the story isn't finished. And may we all write a story of faith, of trust, of obedience, of following Jesus wherever Jesus' spirit leads us. The world is in desperate need of resurrection people who can see beyond the woes of the world and to see the Lord high and lifted up, whose train fills the temple, who brings hope for today and for tomorrow. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. May we face our tomorrows with faith, with trust, knowing that Jesus has risen from the grave, that sin and death have been conquered, that nothing can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Knowing that sin and death and the grave have been conquered, that you are the beloved of God, what will you do? That's our question. May we respond and answer that well. Amen. Let us continue in our worship of God with our offering. Friends, God has opened the gates of righteousness. Let us accept God's invitation and offer gifts of thankfulness and thanksgiving in Christ's name.
you please join me in the prayer of dedication? Holy God, thank you for your goodness and mercy, especially for the good news of the resurrection of Jesus. May these offerings, and indeed our very lives, become a witness to all people of the salvation and grace you bring into the world. Amen. Please be seated. I have quite a few prayer requests uh, to share. I'll start with my brother Brad. Uh, continued prayers for my brother Brad, but the good news as he's fighting shingles, he's now in week 10, but he is making some progress. Yeah, and so we're happy with the progress that he's made, uh, but he still has uh, a ways uh, to go. Prayers also for Tina's granddaughter, Riley, uh, who continues to undergo physical treatment to regain motor skills that she mysteriously lost. Uh, she is making progress and she is in good spirits and we just pray that that will continue and it would be nice to know what caused this to happen uh, we've that has uh, yet to really uh, be found trisha has asked uh, for prayers for a young friend uh, mary t let's keep her uh, in our prayers and then uh, from our sister church, Jim Atkins is undergoing infusions for a, a very stubborn and very serious infection. And the problem is the infusion weakens the kidneys. And they've come to a point where the doctor said, the infection will kill you. You can live on dialysis. And so they're trying to find that right blend uh, of the medication. But this has been about a year long process for Jim yeah, and for his wife, Bev. Let us continue to keep them uh, in our prayers. Also from our sister church, uh, Sam White uh, has um, started a dialysis and now uh, treats three times a week and just prayers uh, that that will be uh, helpful uh, for him. Some difficult prayer requests to share. Some of you may remember uh, Pastor Paul Rapina, who has filled in uh, several occasions uh, here uh, at the church. His daughter uh, has passed away uh, this week uh, from a brain tumor. Uh, prayers uh, for that uh, family. Also from our sister church, uh, Irv Price uh, notified me yesterday uh, that his son uh, was killed by a drunk driver uh, yesterday. His son was walking along the side of the road and, and he was struck. Uh, that happened in California. Prayers uh, for Irv uh, and for uh, his family. Let us also continue to be in prayer uh, for the Middle East, uh, prayers for Europe uh, and the conflict there, as well as uh, prayers uh, for our nation. Remembering that Jesus is risen and that love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of those in need of good news. And I'll be closing my petitions with the words, God of grace, and you are invited to respond with, hear our prayer. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, the church. Where the church is persecuted, protect it. Where the church is privileged, grant it humility. Guide us all to embody Christ's love in the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Life-giving God, we pray for the earth, your good creation. Join our prayers with branches lifted in praise and roaring waters of new life, that together we may proclaim Easter hope. God of grace, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for all peoples and nations, 
free oppressed communities from occupation, exploitation, and abuse, teach leaders your way of justice, empower peacemakers, and all who work to end violence and strife. God of grace, hear our prayers. Liberating God, we pray for people everywhere who long for good news. Roll away the stones that keep people from living with dignity and wholeness. Breathe new life and hope into people struggling to make it through each day. God of grace, hear our prayers. Loving God, we pray for this community of faith and for your spirit in our midst. Fill us with your wisdom that we may serve and care for others. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love. Through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord, we pray, sharing together in the prayer that he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, let us also, one more prayer request uh, to pass on to you. Um, a very, one of our most faithful listeners, uh, Jim Sylvester from uh, Kentucky, has asked for continued prayers uh, for his sister, Paige, uh, whose cancer has returned. So let us also uh, keep this in our prayers. Looking uh, towards uh, our announcements, uh, thank you uh, for all who volunteered to help with the Easter brunch and uh, those who worked uh, to make the sanctuary uh, look uh, so beautiful. Our next soup luncheon at Central will be held uh, on Sunday after church service on April 7th, so that's uh, next week. All are welcome. If you wish to bring a soup or a dessert, that is always welcome. So uh, if you, uh, all I can say is if you come to church next week, it really will be a super experience. Yeah, yeah, so. Are there any other uh, announcements that should be highlighted? Uh, adult Sunday School is starting at 9 next Sunday. Is that, did I hear you correctly? Okay. Thank you. I invite you to stand uh, for our closing hymn, hymn number 322, Up From the Grave He Arose. Thank you. 